Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Happy Tuesday evening to you all. My name is Jason Kretzky, and it is a pleasure to be with you guys here tonight. Um, now, tonight we're doing something that we have never done before. Um, if you have ever attended one of our master class or live charting shows, you know they usually happen in the evening times. Um, you know that we love to bring special guests on to discuss how they look at the market and to teach us kind of how they trade. Uh, it's always great to get a professional opinion on how things are looking out there and also get some understanding of how the pros do it. Um, tonight, though, we're doing something completely different. Tonight, you guys are our special guests. So thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Um, for the show this evening, we will be putting your trading skills to the test using TrendSpider's strategy tester. Now, I'm sure that there are many different levels of traders in the audience. Some of you guys may be total seasoned pros. Others may be totally new to trading. Maybe you just started trading recently. Um, we've tried to design this show to give you all something to take away. For our seasoned veterans out there, we're gonna be testing your knowledge of technical indicators and how they can be used together. For our newer traders, we're gonna be showing you guys ways to think about your trading strategies uh, and specifically how to improve upon them. Maybe you have some stuff that you're trying and it's not working. Maybe you have heard of some strategies and you want to figure out how to maybe make them a little bit better. Hopefully we'll do a little bit of myth busting. And of course, we'll be learning a ton about TrendSpider's um, strategy tester. So with that, let's get into what this show is all about. Throughout the show tonight, you guys, the audience, are going to be wholly responsible for the performance of the strategies that we're testing. I'll be providing you with prompts, so you're going to have choices to choose from, um, but you're all going to be deciding on which prompts to use at any time. We're going to go through one strategy at a time, so you'll first vote on the strategy that you want to start with, and then we'll have another round of votes. You'll be able to vote on how to change the entry criteria to make the strategy perform better. You'll be able to vote on how to change the exit criteria to make the strategy perform better. And then you'll vote on which name out of a small basket of names the strategy performs best on. That's just kind of a fun little thing to end each round with. It's going to be a ton of fun for me to see what you guys end up picking because I built all this stuff on the back end. So it'll be interesting to see how hard I made it. Maybe I didn't make it that hard at all. And hopefully it'll be eye opening for you as well. So let's get started. I am going to ask my lovely assistant, Miss Sadie. She's on the other end here. Um, she's going to be creating these polls for us. So I'm going to go ahead and ask her to make the first poll. Um, for the strategies that you guys can choose from. While she's doing that, uh, you guys go ahead and vote on the strategy that you'd like to start with, and we'll get going in a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna switch screens real quick. So Sadie, can we get that poll up? Actually, while we're while we're waiting on the poll, how are you guys doing tonight? Is everybody doing well? Awesome, Brad. Glad to hear it. All right, so the poll is up. You guys, all you got to do, just click on the click on the uh, strat that you guys want to go with. And we'll give you guys about a minute or so to do that. Eagleizer, it is the end of the month. Glad to have this one behind us. Hopefully the next one is better than this one. Thirty second countdown for the poll here, guys.
15 seconds on the poll. Get your votes in, y'all. Felix, love the VWAP. All right, here, the poll is complete. We got 20 votes. There are 44 of y'all in here. I want to see 44 votes next time. Okay, so which one was the winner? Let's see. Mac D, Mac D cross down bearish momentum. Okay, great. Right on. So let's jump to it. Um, this one. Let me grab it. This one was designed for the XLF. So I'm going to pop over to the XLF chart. We're going to go to the daily time frame. All right, so. First thing we have to do, we have to define what we're looking for here. So this is this is a very basic idea. This is a MACD cross down. We're going to be selling the MACD cross down and we're going to be closing out that trade on the MACD cross up. So essentially when the MACD cross is down on the signal line, we're getting into a short bias trade. When the MACD cross is up on the signal line, we're getting out of that trade. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to define how far back we're testing. We're going 7,000 candles. We're going to switch this to short only. Hold on, Sadie, before you add that, end that poll. Let's start, let's wait on that real quick. Um, so we need to script this out. So I'm gonna say indicator MACD cross down on indicator MACD signal. And then we're gonna add on the exit side indicator MACD crossed up on indicator MACD signal. I'm gonna throw a MACD indicator up here on the chart so you guys can kind of see what's going on with it. For anybody who is not familiar, the MACD line is the blue line. The MACD signal is the orange line. So we are selling when they cross down, right? Around in here, we would be selling and we are buying when they cross back up. We're gonna run this thing real quick and we're gonna see how it performs. Performs pretty lousy, you guys. Performs pretty lousy. So on the performance chart, we see negative 67.8% loss. This is not good. Versus the asset performance over that same period of time, it's an 87% gain over the same period of time. So, so far, so bad, right? On the right-hand side, our tabular data. Um, if anybody has questions about tabular data, we can talk about it. However, I want to very just quickly talk about these red highlights here. This is called no-go highlighting. No-go highlighting is not a suggestion. No-go highlighting is a hard stop. No-go highlighting is our way of telling you your strategy is not sustainable. So if you see this when you are creating your strategies, if you see no-go highlighting anywhere, you need to take a step back, pump the brakes, and think about what's going on with that. So we could see our win rate is very poor, 30% win rate. Our average return is negative. Our expectancy is negative. This is all bad. We need to fix this. How can we fix it? We need to talk about the entry side here. We have two options for how we can fix this strategy. First thing we could do is we can define strength. We can add it a uh, parameter here that defines that RSI is below 50, right? It's one thing we could do. So not only are we, uh, not only are we gonna sell on this cross down, but we're also defining that RSI is below 50, or we can define trend. Trend can be defined a lot of different ways. In this case, we're defining it as price closing less than the 50 EMA. So do we wanna add price closing below the 50 EMA as our additional uh, short trigger, or do we wanna define RSI below 50 as our additional uh, short trigger? You guys decide, I'm gonna, Let's see what we say. How long has this poll been up? It looks like you guys are going with define trend. 71% of y'all are voting for define trend. I'll give you 15 seconds. Eagleizer, if the stream is blurry, I apologize, man. It's not blurry on my side. All right. You guys chose define trend. And what a fine choice you chose. So let's do that. Let's say condition. And we're going to say price close less than indicator exponential moving average 50. We're going to rerun this test and see what we come up with. 
Nice, guys. That is a big change of pace. We went from a negative 67% loss to a 25% gain. Nice job. However, however, we still do have some no-go highlighting. 31% win rate here. So this is problematic. When we hover over it, we could see with, with this metric, um, it's, it's better than it was, but your risk-reward ratio is simply not high enough for this uh, win rate. So we need to improve our risk reward ratio. If you guys want to, I'm going to show you this real quick, just show you what, what would have happened if, uh, if we had gone with RSI here. We'll say RSI less than a constant value of 50. So we eked it out just a little bit with that price closing greater than the 50 or rather price closing less than the 50. So I'm gonna go back and add that real quick. Now, how can we make it even better? We have two options for additions to our exit. We can define strength again, right? We can, we can say that the RSI is less than 30, meaning RSI is kind of oversold here, right? Would this be a reason to maybe get out of this short bias trade if RSI is oversold? Or do we want to define trend again? Do we want to say on the, on the front end, we define price closing less than the 50? Do we want to define on the, on the back end that price is closing above the 50? So do you guys want to define strength or do you want to find trend? RSI less than 30 or price closing greater than the 50? Y'all tell me. So far, so good, guys. I'm really impressed. You got the first one dead on. We got a we got defined strength, and if you're on Trend Spider, if you're a Trend Spider user and you're following along with me, don't cheat. We're trying to test your 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 knowledge here. Defining strength, seventy five percent so far. Frank saying RSI, Eagleizer, you're good to go. Cool. Glad to hear it. Glad it's looking better for you. Islam, uh, these are kind of pre-built, so we got to stick with the story here on these. But maybe in a future one, we can play around with your DEMA instead. Strength still eking it out, 71%. Welcome to some of you new folks who are uh, freshly tuning in. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We really do appreciate it. I don't know, Kevin. I can't speak to what they offer, my friend. All right, 15-second warning. Looks like strength is going to take it. 71% of the vote for strength. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. So again, 50 of y'all here, 19 votes. Even if you don't know, I want you to vote. You just, just vote. Just guess. Take your best guess. Okay. So strength wins. Let's test the other option first. Let's test trend and see. So we said price closing greater than the 50. We're gonna run this and see. I think you guys might have picked the right answer. You can see that the performance again went way down. Now we've got a ton of no-go highlighting, letting us know that this strategy is not the way to go. We're gonna switch it to indicator. We're gonna say RSI. We're going to say less than a constant value of 30 for that oversoldness. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I meant to use the <laughs> any of the following definer. Either way, you guys said RSI and 
you did very well because that was the way to go. We were either getting out when the MACD crossed up on the signal or if RSI was below 30, and that was the way to go. 75% gain on this particular strategy over the past 7,000 candles. This is 24 years worth of data. Um, it, it doesn't quite beat buy and hold, but it comes darn close. And you can see on the right-hand side, all of our tabular data, we don't see any no-go highlighting. We've, we've got the right amount of positions that we need. We've got the right win rate. We've got the right risk reward. We've got the right average win, the right average loss. Everything is lining up to tell us that this strategy is a sustainable strategy over the longer term on this particular name. Now, the last test for you guys is what name does this perform best on? Since we tested it on XLF, I'm going to give you a handful of banks because we're talking financials here. So does it work better on XLF? Does it work better on JPM, BAC, or Wells Fargo? Y'all let me know which one you think. We got one vote for JPM. Okay, interesting. JPM slowly taking it away. Again, remember, if you're here, vote. There's no reason not to vote. JPM, 44% of the vote. Thirty second warning. Fifteen seconds. Get your votes in. Which one does it perform best on? The index or the individual name? <laughs> what's up roman hope you're doing good man all right so jpm clear winner xlf trailing behind let's go to jpm here and check it out how does it perform on jpm lousy negative 78 percent loss versus 634 percent gain over the same period of time buy and hold let's check bac BAC, lousy. Let's check Wells Fargo. Ooh, we got some drawings on here. Wells Fargo, lousy. So the clear winner was actually the index, XLF. So if you're going to run this strategy, if you're thinking about it, play around with it. Hopefully that was fun. Roman, you missed it. That's okay, though. Archer, <laughs> All right, let's jump to the next strategy. We've got four more strategies for you guys to choose from. We have Sadie make that poll. So we got a 50-20, or rather a 5-20 SMA cross strategy. Looks like it's starting to win out. We've got a Bollinger Band range strategy. We've got a weekly anchored VWAP strategy. That one's pretty cool. Weekly anchored VWAP, maybe taking it. Get your votes in. I want to get through as many of these strategies as possible. So if we want to like speed up the voting, y'all, we totally can do that. I've got five strategies that we can play around with. DeLeo's voting for the AV WAP. All right, let's go. All right, 15 seconds. Looks like the anchored VWAP is going to take it, y'all. I'm going to throw that bad boy up on my chart. 
now that I got a feel for how this voting works. This is our first time using voting here. So we're kind of figuring it out. Hopefully it's cool. Um, all right. So this one. Let me see here. This one. The idea behind this strategy. This is going to be on the queues. This is going to be a 30 minute time frame strategy. And it's going to be a short bias strategy as well. Um, and so the idea behind this is that we are going short when price is below the weekly anchored VWAP. What do I mean by that? Every Monday, the, the VWAP anchors to Monday and it continues until Friday. When we get a new Monday, we get a new anchored VWAP. That's the idea here. So I'm going to go back to the strat tester and I'm going to say condition price close less than indicator a VWAP. Now, a couple of things to note if you're using anchored VWAPs in your strategy tester. For to do this, I need to change this to week to date so that it's anchored to the first of every week. And then I need to put it in continuous mode. Continuous mode simply just says that every week it makes another one and it's going to track them as we go. So I'm going to put it in continuous mode, say apply. And then I want to get out of this short if price closes above. So I'm going to say price close greater than indicator AVWAP. And I got to do the same thing. I'm going to say week to date and continuous. Switch this to short. And then I'm going to change this to 7,000 candles. So how do we do? Well, we do pretty decent, right? Our performance, 22.4% profit against a 6.4% uh, loss buying and holding over the same period of time. You can see there's about two years worth of data here. So 22.4% gain versus a 6.4% loss on the asset. Now that seems pretty decent. Um, however, we have some no-go highlighting here. 27% win rate and with the risk reward ratio that we have, that's just not a good enough win rate. So we need to make this better. How can we make it better? Frank, we're not only doing short, I promise. It's just what I chose for this particular one. We've got some long based ones too. Um, so how can we make this better? We have two options. You can either, there's another define trend. We can define trend and we could say that price closed, um, less than the 50 EMA, or we can define momentum and we could say that MACD is less than the signal line. Just MACD is below the signal line. You guys decide momentum or trend. And I think we'll get there it is. So again, def the trend option is price closed less than the 50 EMA. So we're only, essentially, we're only getting into this short if price is also below the 50 EMA. Or we're only getting into this short if the MACD and the MACD is below the signal line. Looks like Momo's gonna take it. DeLeo says Momo, Roman says Momo. Hmm, interesting. Interesting, interesting. Everybody who's tuned in, New folks to the stream, thank you so much for being here. We do have a discount code for you guys tonight. If anybody's interested, if you're not yet a TrendSpider user and you're interested in becoming one, let me hook you guys up with that. There's a 35% off code. We'd love to have you on the platform if you're interested. All right, let's close this thing out. Looks like Momo is the clear winner here. So let's define some Momo. We're going to say MACD is less than MACD signal. And let's see how we do. Well, guys, I didn't quite do it, did it? Our performance just went quite down. We went from 22% gain to 5% gain. Hmm. Let's try the other one. Price close less than the 50 EMA.
Well, how about that? 33% gain. And check out our tabular data here. What do we not see in tabular data? There is no no-go highlighting, y'all. No no-go highlighting. So we've done pretty well. But can we do better? What do you think? Can we? Let's try. We're doing it again. We're defining trend and we're defining strength. Y'all pick. Trend, price close greater than the 50 EMA. Strength, RSI greater than 50. What's going to get us out? What's going to get us out of this trade? Outside of price closing above the weekly VWAP, what's going to get us out of this short? RSI being greater than 50 or price closing above the 50 EMA as well? Got to call your advisor, DeLeo. Looks like strength's going to take it. 80% of the vote so far. I see that we're getting more votes now, but not, not as many as we have viewers. So I'd really like it if you guys participated. Eagleizer, trend for entry, strength for exit. All right. We're about to find out. We're finna find out, as they say. How many of y'all are cheating over there? All right. Strength, 19 votes. Y'all, come on. There's 64 of you guys here. Do better. Okay. You guys want to see strength? You guys say it's strength. We're going to check out trend first then. So we're going to define trend. Price close greater than the 50 EMA. What do we think? Well, it didn't do much, did it? Kind of reduced our performance just a smidge. Not bad. Didn't change anything about tabular data, but it didn't really do us any good. Let's check and see what RSI did. RSI greater than 50. Run it again. And bam, you guys nailed it. Nice job, well done, very proud of you. You guys kind of flubbed the entry, but you fixed it on the exit. And I'm stoked about that. Performance, almost 38% gain against a 6.4% loss over the same period of time. Um, yeah, everything looks great. Well done, you guys. Congratulations. Very, very proud of you. Let's go to a new strategy. Have you guys, have, are you figuring anything out about this yet? Let's pick a new strategy. What do we have left? We've got a, uh, we've got a the strat strategy. We've got a Bollinger Band strategy. We've got a simple moving average strategy. I know these things are basic, but the whole point is trading doesn't have to be super, super complicated. You know, you can utilize these very basic tools to make educated trading decisions. So let's get another poll going, Sadie. Islam, you are in luck, my friend. All we have left is long strategies. So for anybody who is not a strat trader, this could be interesting if we when we go to the when we go to the strat trade here. But it looks like you guys are maybe gonna pick it. Again, if you're if you're here, vote. Be a part of this thing. We want your thoughts. We want to hear what you guys think is going to work and what you guys think is not going to work. That's right, Matt DeLeo. That's very true. Often the most simple strategies perform the best. It doesn't have to be super complicated is the point. It can be very complicated. I know traders that, are, that use very complicated strategies. However... The point here is to show that it doesn't have to be and also to show how to make things better.
Looks like the strat reversal might be about to take it, y'all. Let's do 15 seconds. Bunch of you guys here now. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you have not started voting, please do vote. Looks like Strat's going to take it. I'm going to get set up for it. So for anybody who is not familiar with the Strat, let's very quickly talk about the Strat. The Strat is, oh yeah, for sure, Trickster. Thank you for being here, man. We appreciate it. Um, the Strat is a, a trading philosophy. They utilize three, essentially three candles. There's a three, there's a one, there's a two. A three is an outside bar, a one is an inside bar, and a two either takes out the high or takes out the low of the previous bar. So it's a two up or a two down. So there are pretty well-known strat reversal patterns. There's a three, one, two, the Chicago reversal. There's a, a one, two, two. Um, there's a bunch of them. There's a one, two. We're going to play around with the one that I kind of like the most, which is the one, two up, two down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to candlestick patterns real quick, and I'm going to highlight, let me do this, one, two up, two down, and one, two down, two up. And so what these look for, you have an inside bar, and then you have a two up, and then you have a two down. So you have the bar, this bar is your inside bar, this is your two up, this is your two down because it took out the low of the previous bar. And this is a pretty uh, aggressive one. I'm actually gonna switch over to SPY here and I'm gonna go to the four hour time frame. I'm trying to mix it up on time frames for you guys too. So this is a bit cleaner of example. This is a one, two down, two up. So here's your one, your two down, your two up, right? And here's a one, two up, two down. So you have an inside bar, one, two up, two down. So generally speaking, these are, these are considered reversal patterns. Do they always come at tops and bottoms? No, but they do have a tendency to, you can see them very clearly. They tend to appear towards tops and towards bottoms. You have your one, two up, two down up here. You have your one, two down, two up uh, down here, right? So the idea of this strategy is simply going long on the one, two down, two up, and then going and then getting out of your long on the one, two up, two down. Pretty simple. So we're gonna to go to the strategy tester and we're going to add this in. So we say condition, we're gonna to go to the candlestick pattern option and we're gonna say one, two down, two up for our entry. And we're going to say for our exit, one, two up, two down. Now we wanna test back quite a bit farther. We're gonna go 7,000 candles on this one. Hey Naresh, how's it going, man? That's okay. You can send it anytime, brother. All right. So pretty interesting little strategy here. Actually, I was kind of surprised when I was playing around with it. It actually doesn't perform all that bad. 96% uh, gain. And of course, it's not going to be buy and hold. Um, but the, it, again, I would argue that it, this is never my first priority. My first priority is never to beat buy and hold. It's nice when it happens, but there's that whole time thing that you have to think about. If your money's tied up in this strategy, it's not working somewhere else, you know? So you got to consider that. And all things considered, you got 100% gain against the asset gaining 416% over the same period of time. And you have no no-go highlighting. This is actually a pretty clean little strategy. How do we make it better? This might be difficult for folks who don't know the strat. And if you don't know the strat, that's okay. You can learn it some other time, or you can just kind of guess. I wanted to use specific strat patterns as other options. So since we're getting in on the one, two down, two up reversal, what could we change about our entry? Two options. I'm gonna give you two different strat reversal patterns. The first one is a three, one, two up. So that's a outside bar, an inside bar, and then a two up. You can choose that or you can change the entry to a one, two up. So it's just an inside bar and two up. It's one of the most basic strap patterns out there. I know lots of folks that literally that's all they trade is a one inside bar break, higher or lower. So which one should we change it to? Change it to a three, one, two, or change it to a one, two up? 
over 70 of you guys here. If there are not at least 50 votes, I'm going to be so mad at you guys. Let's get them votes in. I want to know what you guys are thinking. Three, one, two seems to be eking it out here. 57% of the vote. Sixty percent of the vote for the three one two. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. What's up, Jeff Salador? How's it going, man? Matt DeLeo says one, two up, but the it seems like the voters are kind of digging the three, one, two. Mr. Hedge Fund. Yes, this is the response that I want to get. Dude, this tool is so helpful. It's so, so helpful. How else are you to know? How, are you, how else are you to know if your strategy really works? And this is kind of the real point that we're trying to, to drive home here. Not only is this easy to do, but it's wildly helpful. You know, spending time playing around with this thing, you can see what I'm doing is not all that crazy. We're, we're making very basic, simple adjustments using very basic concepts, whether it's trend, strength, momentum, you know, we're not changing very much here to turn these strategies into better performing, actually actionable things that we can use. All right, let's close it down. We got 68% of the vote for 312. I, I, before we get into this, I want to see how many of you guys voted. How many voted? 31. 31. Okay, okay. I guess I got to do better. All right, so you guys said 312. 67% of you guys said 312. Let's change it to 312 and see what happens. Remember where we were at before? Real quick. 96%. So let's change it to 312. We're going to say candlestick pattern. 312 up. We're going to run it. How do we do? 109%. 0.21. 109.21%. So we did a little bit better here, right? It's about 17% better than we than we were before. Let's see what the one two up yields us. Cause you gotta test them both, right? Can't just go with what you guys vote for. Gotta test them both. Boom! 166.59 using one two up. One two up is the winner. Now we gotta fix the exit. How can we make the exit better? Same deal. Do we want to utilize that 312, but this time we're going down? So 312 down or 12 down? We use the 12 up. That really helped us a lot on the front end. Will the opposite help us on the back end? You guys, let me know. Are we doing the 312 down or the 12 down? Uh, okay, I see what you guys are doing. I see what you guys are doing. One, two down, kind of getting some love here. You saw how it helped things on the front end. You're thinking it's going to help things on the back end too. That makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely, you can use the strat on any time frame, Gak. One, two down with 60% of the vote so far. You guys are trying to keep it real simple here, aren't you? We did say simplicity is key. But will it work this time? I don't know. 312 down. 
a little bit more complex of a pattern. You kind of got to think about what these patterns are doing, right? When you have an inside bar, obviously you have price kind of indecision, right? So you're building up, you're building up a little bit of steam there and then you get the push higher or lower. So the three, you take out both sides. So you have volatility and then contraction and then price either gains or fails. Oh no, my, my headphones just went out. Yeah, there they go. One, two D kind of running away with it here. 57% of the vote. So Mr. Hedge Fund, that's an interesting sentiment. Um, I'm really glad that you're finding this helpful. A couple of things that you should know. The first thing that you should know is down here in the bottom right hand corner where it says contact us, we have live people in chat every day answering questions. If you have a question about the strategy tester, hit them up. Also, oh, nope, here, I always get this wrong, but my Twitter handle, at Kretzky Trades, you can hit me up with questions anytime you want to. Strategy tester, I think maybe for some people feels a little bit hard to approach. And I think it's very important that if you have questions about it, that you ask them because it can be very, very super helpful, truly. So do do spend some time with it. I think you might find that it will be, uh, I think it'll be very helpful for you. All right, one, two down, 59% of the vote. I bet we've got all the votes in. So let's go ahead and close it out. One, two down. You guys went the easy route with the one, two down. 22 votes. Come on, guys. Okay. One, two down. It's 59% of the vote. Let's see. Going to run this bad boy. Mmm. Not as good, huh? 144% from 166. On the right-hand side, you guys notice these values here that are popping up, the red and green values. So what these values are, these are the change metrics for the strategy. This is another cool little feature of the strategy tester. It lets you know how the strategy results changed relative to the previous one. So we can see pretty quickly our net profit went down 22%. Our win rate went down 10%. Our loss rate went down as well. We have no no-go highlighting, but ultimately our performance isn't as good. So what do we gotta do? Well, we gotta try the three, one, two down. Let's see. Run that thing. 190.68%. If you remember, our original entry, I think, yielded us like 166. So it's increased, not 46, but it increased about 30%. Uh, our win rate went up 62%. Our uh, average win, four and a half. Average loss, three and a half. Average return, one and a half. Risk reward, 1.35. There you go, guys. Very, very simple there. Um, tricked you both sides. Pretty proud of myself on that. Tricked you guys both times. Asset perf. Where are you seeing it? Oh, asset performance. It's buy and hold over the same period of time, Nasser. So we beat you guys on that one. And that's okay. Not everybody understands the strat. Not everybody knows the strat. But maybe it gives you something to play around with. Let's go to the next strategy. We have two more strategies remaining. We've got about 15 minutes of the show left. So we've got a Bollinger Band strategy. This is going to be a range, buying the range. So we're buying towards the lows of the, the lower Bollinger Band. We're buying towards the lower Bollinger Band. We're selling at the top of the, the upper Bollinger Band. And then we've got a 520 SMA cross strategy. So let's get that voting up. Which one do you guys want? We're going to do them both. 
But which one do you want to do first? That is the question. That's right. Matt DeLeo, this is the way. Do not trade blindly. You don't have to is the thing. You don't have to. You have tools here that you can utilize to make it so that you're not trading blindly. If you are not yet a TrendSpider user, but you are interested in becoming one and you'd like a discount, life is expensive. Have a discount. This is 35% off the plan of your choice. Just added into the chat here. Please take advantage of this if you're interested in becoming a TrendSpider user. We'd love to have you on the platform. Looks like the Bollinger Band strategy is starting to take it here. I might start getting prepped for it. I think it's probably going to end up winning. All right, the Bollinger Band strategy takes it. Can you custom code in a strategy? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Kevin. Can you give me like an example of what you're looking for? And maybe I can tell you if it's possible. All right, so we're gonna be running this one on CVX here. We're switching over to energy. We're running it on the daily time frame. I, I'm hoping that this one might trick you. But we'll see. I don't know. So again, the idea we're going long when price closes or near the uh, lower Bollinger Band. And we're going to get out of this long when price closes near the upper Bollinger Band. Pretty simple idea. I know lots of traders love to trade using Bollinger Bands. So let's test it. So we're going to say price close. And for this definer, we're going to use the within range option because we don't want to define necessarily greater than or less than. We just want to say it's within range of indicator Bollinger Band low. And then we want to say price close is within range of indicator Bollinger Band up, right? Pretty simple. I'm going to switch this to 7,000 candles. Yeah, so that's awesome, Naresh. If you have if you know that Keltners work better for you, absolutely use them. There's no right or wrong here. I chose Bollinger Band simply because it's a pretty well-known indicator. More traders know Bollinger Bands off the top than Keltner channels, but absolutely, go with what works for you. Okay, so interesting. Now, let's talk about this. What do we see? I, I chose this strategy to show you this. I think a lot of traders, I don't want traders to get starry-eyed over the fact that their strategy beats out buy and hold when they've got no-go highlighting. You have a serious problem in this. Even though it beats out buy and hold, you have a problem here, and that is your win rate and your average win percentage. Your win rate is simply not high enough. It tells you what it needs to be. And it's based off of your risk reward ratio. Since your risk reward ratio is so low, your win rate actually has to be quite high in order for this to work. Now we could adjust this. If we could get a bigger win rate, or if we could get a bigger win percentage, then that would reduce the need for a higher win rate, right? Because that would increase our risk reward ratio. The more you understand about these values and how they interplay, the better your strategies are gonna turn out. You can hover over the no-go highlighting and it's going to tell you what you need in order for this to work. So it's telling me I need at least 80.24% of these trades to be winners in order for this strategy to work all else even. For my average win percentage to be 355 or 3.55, I need an 80% win rate, 80 and a quarter percent win rate. So how can we make our entry better here? We can do one of two things. We can either add reversal candles into the mix. So what I mean by that is we would come in here and we would add a couple parameters that say either there's a hammer, a doji, or let's say a bullish engulfing candle, um, as well as price within range. Or 
we can define specifically that price actually broke below the lower Bollinger Band. Doesn't mean it has to close below that. We're not gonna define that. We're just gonna define that a low like this right here. You made a low below the low, lower Bollinger Band. So you tell me what you think is gonna work better. Do we add reversal candles to this to give us a little bit more like belief and strength in that idea that, that there is an actual reversal happening? Or do we change this entry to price the low is actually below the lower Bollinger Band. You guys tell me. Absolutely, Kevin, you can add a stop loss. We're gonna talk through how to do that in the next strategy, actually. Mr. Hedge Fund says add reversal candles. Frank Weeder, sounds like you think the low is more important. So far, it's pretty even. So Naresh, we're not gonna test a golden cross, but we're testing, we're doing a simple moving average cross test. So you'll get an idea of like how to do it. DeLeo, you think the low is key? You think changing the entry completely is key? Adding reversal candles seems to be taking it right now, 56% of the vote. Kevin, you're thinking the reversal candles is the way to go, adding the filter. Fifteen seconds to vote. Looks like add reversal candles. Might be taking it here. Fifty five percent of the vote on add reversal candles. Fifty two, fifty four. Oh, this one's getting a little heated, huh? Interesting. You guys aren't sure. Reversal candles looks like it's going to take it. I'm going to start adding them. Okay, so if we want to add reversal candles here, what we have to do, we actually have to create a condition group. And the reason why we need to create a condition group is quite simple because we're defining multiple things, right? And we're defining them in a different way than we're defining our original entry. So I'm gonna candlestick pattern. I'm gonna say doji. I'm going to say candlestick pattern. I'm gonna say engulfing. We'll say bullish. And we'll also say hammer. So candlestick pattern, hammer. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change this definer from all the following to any of the following. So now what we've got is we're saying price is within range of the Bollinger Band by 1% and either a doji engulfing or hammer candle on the daily as well. So let's run that thing and let's see how it does. See how we do. Oh, big burn. That did not work at all. That ruined our performance. It, uh, it didn't really do much for us in any way, shape, or form. So I tricked you guys. Let's try the other option here. I'm going to remove this condition group, and I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it price low is less than indicator, Bollinger Band low. Remember, we said it doesn't have to close below. We just need to break through. That's it. That's all we're defining. I'm going to rerun. Give it another go. Kevin, the strategy tester works on one time frame right now. All right, Roman, have a good one, man. Thanks for being here. All right, so what do we got? Well, our performance went up. Not a ton, but it went up. 714.51% uh, on the strategy, but we still have this pesky no-go highlighting here. So our, our average win is just simply not high enough. How can we fix it? The problem is that we have a higher average loss than we have a, than an average win. How can we fix it? You guys tell me. Do we do we exit if price actually hits a high above the upper Bollinger Band? So the way that we have it now is that price is closing within range of that upper Bollinger Band. Do we 
do that. Or, so do we change this to price making a high above the Bollinger Band, the upper Bollinger Band? Or do we add protection? And by protection, I mean price closing, actually closing below the lower Bollinger Band. You guys tell me, do we add protection via price closing below the lower Bollinger Band? Or do we change our entry to price making a high above the upper Bollinger Band? Last time what we did was we changed it to price making the low the, below the lower Bollinger Band and that really helped us. It didn't quite fix the strategy, but it helped. It gave us, it gave us a better perf overall performance. So we can either change the exit completely or we can add protection. Essentially, Frank, you're saying stop. This is a stop. This would be a way of, yeah, a way of creating a stop. So essentially like stopping out. What we'll do is we'll change this to any of the following and we'll add that additional criteria that price is actually closed below the lower Bollinger Band. Mr. Hedge Fund says the protection is the way. 58% for changing the exit though. Interesting, interesting, guys. Very interesting. You absolutely can add a trailing stop Nasser. We're going to do that in the next strategy too, my friend. We're going to also kind of talk about, theorize kind of how to use them too. Change exit, eking it out, 55% of the vote. Interesting. For the sake of time, let's close this thing out. And I'm going to skip the last, I'm going to sk skip the uh, which name does it perform the vest on and jump into the next strategy. All right, but let's finish this strategy first. You guys said change the exit. Let's change the exit and see. So we're going to say price high, greater than, indicator, Bollinger Band up. This is what you guys said. How does it work? Nope, didn't do it. Did not fix the strategy. We have a lower performance and our no-go highlighting is still there. So let's fix this strategy. And we need to go back to the original one. We were going to exit when price closed within range of the indicator, the Bollinger Band up. And then we want to add some safety. Let's add some safety. Price closing less than indicator Bollinger Band low. And let's switch this to any of the following so that we're getting out if either of those things is true. And what do we get? Now we have performance that's better than the buy and hold by 130%. And on the tabular data side, we have no no-go highlighting. So this is actually a pretty safe strategy to run. You've got 325 positions over 27 years and it beats out buy and hold. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. All right, so we're gonna jump now into the last strategy. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I was like really nervous about doing this show, making sure that everything was gonna go well. You guys are making this really fun for me. So thank you so much for being here. Let's let's test this last strategy. Protection for the win, Mr. Hedge Fund. That's right. Um, so what I'm going to do here, we're going to go to the five. We're going to grab the five and the 20. I'm going to switch this over to Tesla. And we're going to throw back the strategy tester. We're going to go back 7,000 candles. We're going to go long and very, very basic. We're going to be very, very basic with this. We're going to say we're going to go long when the five crosses up on the 20. And we are going to go, we're going to get out of our long when the five crosses down on the 20. We've all traded a moving average cross at one point in our lives. You cannot lie and say you haven't done it because you have. I know you have. We all know you have. Oops, I meant to test this on the hourly. I apologize. Let me switch this to the hourly. Oh, 
gosh, my bad. I need to switch this cross down. I knew something didn't look right. All right. So we've got it scripted. We've got it tested. And it does pretty darn good on Tesla. Not a surprise. Tesla has been a monster for years. Uh, so not a surprise to see this do well. 926% gain. Uh, the asset gained 1,004%. So you came pretty close on this strategy. The best part is no no-go highlighting, even from the start. So pretty safe little strategy to potentially employ. Uh, what's up, TH? No problem. Um, let's talk about how we can make it better. How can we make it better? We're going back to our trend or relative strength refinement or defining. Do we want to define that price is above the 200 SMA? So price is generally in an uptrend. It's one very simple way of defining an uptrend. Price is above a 200. Or do we want to find, define that relative strength is greater than 70? We only want to take this long when relative strength is on our side. What do you guys think? RSI above 70 or price above the 200? We defining trend here or are we defining relative strength? Which is going to make our strategy do better? Ooh, trend, kind of running away with it, huh? <laughs> Matt DeLeo got the night bot coming on him. That's funny. Defining trend, 60%. The trend is your friend. That's right, Robert Brush. That's what they say anyway. 15 seconds. Matt, you got a little too excited, buddy. You just need to cool it out just a little bit. Excuse me. Defining trend, 59%. Final seconds here. We're gonna show you how to avoid the chop with the crosses, bro. All right, you guys said define trend. Let's add the RSI first and just see indicator relative strength is greater than a constant value of 70. How does it do? Terrible, <laughs> it does terrible. That was there to trick you guys. You guys nailed it. We're gonna say price close. Greater than indicator, simple moving average, 200. And what do we get? Remember, we were at 920 and change, 920. Well, now we're at 1023. Still, no no-go highlighting, still nice and safe here. And we are now beating out the asset. Can we do better? I think we can. But how? How do we do better? We can either define trend. We want to get out if price closes below the 200. And in this case, we're adding it. We're adding this condition. We're not saying any of the following. We're saying all the following. So you get a cross down and prices below the 200, or we add a stop loss and a trailing stop. Do we wanna add protection via a stop loss and a trail stop? Or do we want to choose to define what's going on with trend? Now, I want to show you guys some very quick peripheral tools here while we're letting you guys vote. This is the performance chart. So this gives us a breakdown of the strategy. This is our strategy here in blue. So our strategy relative to the asset. Notice we just overtook the asset just recently in the performance anyway. On the asset itself, anywhere that's highlighted green, that's a winning trade. Anywhere that's red is a losing trade, right? Now, I want to call some attention to like, where are the red spots? Notice how the red spots are oftentimes at like highs. It's kind of interesting, right? I'm going to open up the Price Behavior Explorer. So this gives us a breakdown of, of some of the more granular data that is going on with our strategy. 96% of winners, 96% of losers, number of winning and losing trades. 
I can click these on and off to kind of see these different values on the chart. Um, one thing that I like to do whenever I'm thinking about stop losses and take profits is I like to see, well, when I lose, how, how am I losing, right? How much am I losing? Is there a way to kind of protect some of that stuff? So I'll use something like min max change or I'll use something like 96% of losers or some, you know, I'll use some of these values to kind of gain an understanding of like when I lose, how much? And I can see kind of as time goes on, you can see this is my entry right here and this is time passing. So when I'm in a losing trade, how much am I losing? You know, initially a couple of candles go by and I've lost about 4% and then I lose a little bit more after about five candles. It bounces, then I lose a little bit more down to about 7% after about 11 candles. This just gives me a visual representation of when I lose, how much am I losing? So it gives me an idea of how to think about setting my stops. So if I were to set up a stop loss, maybe I would want to avoid some of these additional troughs here where we lose 7%, where we lose 5% and so on. So maybe I'd want to set a stop loss at around 4%. If I'm going to set a stop loss at 4%, I'm also probably going to set a, a take profit of some kind, right? Remember what we saw when we looked at the performance chart, right? We saw that when momentum dies out, it results in a losing trade. We see that in price coming into these highs, we get into the trade and then all of a sudden it goes against us. Can we mitigate that? Well, yeah, potentially we can with a trailing stop. Somebody had asked earlier about the trail stops. So clearly you guys have picked 69% ad protection. We're gonna go with it and we're gonna test it. So in order to add a stop loss and a trail stop, you just come down here and you select those boxes. And I'm going to change this to 4% because I deemed 4% to be the value that I thought maybe I should, I would want to stop out at to avoid the additional losses. And I'm going to check after candle close. You can play around with this. You may decide that you don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and check it and we're going to run that test. And what do we get? We have increased the performance of our strategy just by mitigating some losses, by protecting ourselves once a trade had gone in our favor, we added 428% to our profits on this strategy. Pretty awesome. Still no no-go highlighting. And I'm just going to let you know right now, this does better than the 200 SMA uh, additional condition. So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how the stop losses and the trailing stops work and how you can utilize these periphery tools to kind of make those decisions. And with that, guys, with that, that's the end of the show. I hope that you found this to be helpful. I hope that you found this to be informative. I had a ton of fun making these strategies. It was a little bit stressful. I'm not going to lie because uh, I wanted to try and build them up into something that worked really well. And I also wanted to kind of try and trick you guys. So hopefully, hopefully you guys have, are walking away with, um, with a little bit of understanding about how to use these tools, a little bit more understanding about how to use the tools. If you have any questions, please, please, please do, uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Like I said, we do have a team on hand seven days a week, actually. They are there to answer your questions. If you're curious about how to use something, if you don't know what you're doing, you want to play around with this tool, but you just don't know where to start, hit us up, ask these questions. You can always hit me up on Twitter. Uh, my DMs stay open. You're welcome to shout out at me. I want to help you guys get comfortable using the tool. I know it, it, can, be, it can be a lot. It's a lot to, to kind of take in. So uh, hopefully... This show was enjoyable. Hopefully you guys learned something. Thank you so much all for being here. Uh, Trickster, Robert, Hepcat, Fresh, Mr. Hedge Fund, TH Archer, uh, Matt DeLeo, my friend, my good friend. Really appreciate you guys all being here. There is not a free light version Kumar, but I can't say that there won't be in the future. New Stod, thank you for being here. Paulo, thank you for being here. If you guys are interested in becoming TrendSpider users, if you're not yet a TrendSpider user, please do take advantage of that 35% off discount. We just posted it in the chat. And then last but not least, guys, Thursday. It's going to be pretty awesome. We've got a... I, I'm sure some of you guys 
have have been on these shows before. I'm sure some of you guys tune into our Twitter spaces. Thursday, we have an absolute banger Twitter space for you guys. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to have a discussion. The goal, the goal is a, a healthy, friendly discussion between technical people and fundamental macro people about what the heck is going on in the markets. I don't know about you guys, but I've been sitting in on a lot of spaces and I've been noticing that all of the technical people that I pay attention to are all kind of saying like, you know, things don't look so bad. Things look maybe constructive. It goes from being not so bad, maybe constructive to like, we've been in a bull market for eight months. But on the macro side, all of the macro people, it's just nothing but bad news. Everything is bad news. Student debt, China and Russia, quantitative, quantitative tightening, all these things, all these things that, that should send the market wildly lower. So we want to have a healthy discussion. We've got Brent from Spot Gamma. We've got Callum Thomas. We've got Julia Cordova. We've got Anne Marie Bain. We've got JC Peretz from All Star Charts. We've got Samantha DeLuke. We've got Caleb Franzen. We've got Scott Redler and more. We have a ton of folks. I don't even know how long this space is going to last. We've got so many people. It's probably going to be pretty interesting. A ton of smart people are joining to shed their, you know, their insights on what the heck is going on out there. Please tune in. Um, again, it's on Twitter, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Follow Trend Spider. Tune in to that. I cannot wait to be in the middle of this conversation with all these awesome people. So again, with that, guys, thank you all so much for being here tonight. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, uh, you know, hit us up on Twitter and let us know that you enjoyed it or send us a message in chat or whatever. Let us know. If we can do more of these, we'd love to. So uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a great rest of your evening. Thank you again for being here. I hope it was helpful. And I can't wait to see you guys, hopefully, some of you guys, um, in the Twitter space on Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. All right. Have a great evening. We'll see you soon.